And the idea that you decide any scientific question by mere consensus is opposed by the philosophers of science from Aristotle 2,400 years ago to Al-Haytham, the founder of the scientific method in 11th century Iraq, to uh, Karl Popper in 1934 in the celebrated paper that formalized the scientific method as an iterative algorithm. In none of these people's opinion is science, or was it, or will it ever be, decided by consensus. As Einstein himself said when replying to a book by the Nazis who regarded his science as Jewish science and they wished to attack it, and they had a hundred scientists against Einstein, he said, if there is something wrong with my theory, one paper will be enough to set the entire theory aside. You won't need a hundred scientists. So merely counting heads, the argumentum ad populum, merely saying that various scientific societies are, are august, the argumentum ad vericundiam, the arguments from headcount fallacy and reputation fallacy respectively, are not proper scientific arguments. He's right. Science isn't done by consensus, but there is a consensus view on what the science says based on our best understanding of the available evidence. Just like there is a consensus view on the subject for anthropogenic global warming, there is one for evolution, plate tectonics, big bang, germ theory in all the scientific fields and subjects. And that is what Richard Dennis was referring to when he said the following. So let me start with an analogy. Imagine that you went to the doctor, and uh, I hope this doesn't happen, but imagine that you were diagnosed with a skin cancer. And the doctor, uh, having diagnosed this skin cancer, suggested a, a, an intense and rapid treatment. Uh, the treatment unpleasant uh, and potentially expensive, uh, but the prognosis was good. Now that's bad news, and you might, like to, you might wish that it were other, so you might get a second opinion. You go to see another doctor, they confirm the diagnosis. You see a third doctor, you see a fourth doctor, they all confirm the diagnosis. But after, finding a, uh, after shopping around for long enough, spending more time while the cancer potentially spreads, you finally find a doctor who uh, advises you that you don't have cancer, and even if you did have cancer, chemotherapy and radiotherapy are unlikely to work. Uh, there's plenty of uh, evidence on the internet to suggest that herbal remedies would be far more effective. <laughs> what would you do? What would you do? If there are people out there telling you don't act. There are people out there saying the solutions won't work. But how would you, as a person, make a decision under such uncertainty? Now, I reckon most people would go with the science. And I think it's uh, called me old fashioned but I think it's just common sense. And I certainly suspect uh, that our children and our family would encourage us to take the cautious route and listen to the science, not the optimistic route that perhaps the science is wrong and anyway, maybe the treatments don't work. It's not a simple argumentum ad populum if you point out that 97% of publishing climate scientists agree based on the scientific literature that we are causing the planet to war. Also, it's not an argumentum ad vericundium, an argument from authority, when you point out that almost all scientific organizations reflect and confirm this consensus. If that would invalidate what these scientists and organizations are saying, it would also invalidate the consensus on evolution, a subject where there is also an almost anonymous agreement that biological evolution is a principle of nature that has been well established by science. You can disagree with the consensus, but it's then up to you to prove with research why the current understanding of that scientific subject is wrong, and provide a hypothesis that fits the evidence better, something opponents of the current consensus view haven't been able to do. And it's not because climate researchers don't listen to criticism. Far from it, as Dr. Richard Alley showed with his testimony before a congressional hearing. 
And how do we know it's how do we know it's weed, not nature? I mean, what's, I mean we, we've got the increase in CO2, but but the skeptic would argue, well, wait a second, I can go back to 1927 and find articles about glaciers retreating. What's the difference? I mean, you know, you could look at a football team and say, well, they were losing back then and they're losing now. So what's the difference? Right. So, so the first one is the physics. Um, we just cannot get away from the warming effect of CO2. It's been known for over a century. It was really clarified by the Air Force, who were actually interested in what wavelength should I use for the sensor on my heat-seeking missile. But CO2 interacts with radiation and there's enough CO2 to make a difference. And, and we just can't get away from that physics. Uh, the second one is, is looking at, is there any other possible thing to explain this and it really took I'm sorry sir it took a few billion dollars of your money and about 30 years to say that there's nothing else that we can find in nature to do this and this is because satellites are expensive but someone says it's the Sun well then you need a satellite to watch the Sun to see if the Sun is getting brighter but it isn't and if someone says well it's volcanoes then we need a history of volcanoes and we need to know what they're doing and if someone says it's cosmic rays we need cosmic ray monitors and it's taken sort of 30 years to get to the point of saying no we've looked really hard we can't find anything else then there's a third piece which is the fingerprinting which is what Dr. Santer was discussing if you were to say okay yeah, I know we spend a lot of money on satellites, and the satellites say the sun is not getting brighter, but maybe, maybe, maybe the satellites are wrong, and the sun's getting brighter, and we can't see it. That makes a prediction. It gets warmer down here, and it gets warmer way up at the top of the stratosphere. CO2 says warmer, colder. What's going on? Warmer, colder. So the fingerprinting in time and in space says that we got it right on the other two pieces. It's mostly us now. This was a perfect explanation by Dr. Richard Alley about how they have made sure they got it right. And not only that, that they listen to critics and investigate if they have a point. That's how climate research works. That's how scientific research works.